the banks then went completely overboard, safety conscious, um, but they were they were asking for far too much information. There were not enough safeguards on what they would then use the information for, and they and they they spread it far too thinly across far too many people. And they've not learned from experience. The the behaviour of their complaints and customer services lines when you approach them about this is absolutely shocking. It's worse than the initial threatening letters. And then they expand it out into family members. Um, so the banks are out of control. Their internal systems are shocking. The financial regulators should simplify the system, but they should also tell the banks to sort out their customer service and their complaints procedures. It wouldn't be acceptable in any other industry, and it shouldn't be acceptable in the banking industry. To talk to you about, which has been bubbling away over many days now, um, is the story about Nigel Farage's bank account and Coots mm. closing oh, it and oh, why oh. did they close it? And now we know, uh, front page of the Times today, that the boss of NatWest, who's also the boss of Coots, um, has said sorry to Nigel Farage over this, um, saying they were deeply inappropriate comments made about why his bank account was closed. Jack, I know that you've got quite a strong view on this. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to say, don't get me started. In 2019, I uh, I, I was getting harassed by my bank uh, over not filling in these ridiculous forms where they basically cull a whole bundle of personal information about you that they can then use for marketing and research. Uh, and uh, they actually wrote to my, I was power of attorney over my mother, who'd had two really big strokes that uh, winter. Um, and they wrote to my mother threatening to close her bank account because of the fact that I was the power of attorney over, over her accounts. Um, I eventually got an apology and a donation to charity for that. And then this year, they did it again. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I've just got, last week, got an apology and a bigger donation to charity uh, for the same reason. The banks are out of control on this. Their internal customer services processes and complaint systems are terrible, probably among the worst in the private sector in this country. And the financial regulators have got the balance between bureaucratic regulation and customer sensitivity wrong. And this needs a real shakeup and the Treasury are finally getting on to it, but they should give them a deadline at the end of this year and get their house in order. It's absolutely shocking. And just for people who haven't been following this as, as closely as probably most of us have, explain why it is the concerns that banks have about politicians and, and why those the, the, you know those accounts might be closed. Because we've heard this from quite a few politicians. Yes. Well, the financial regulators basically botched the initial um, advice. They, they, they brought in rules that uh, that had bank, banks had to get more information about their customers to, in order to stop people um, you know, dodgy ex, uh, politicians from abroad setting up bank accounts in this country and so on. The banks then went completely overboard, safety conscious, um, but they were they were asking for far too much information. There were not enough safeguards on what they would then use the information for, and they and they they spread it far too thinly across far too many people. And they've not learned from experience. The the behaviour of their complaints and customer services lines when you approach them about this is absolutely shocking. It's worse than the initial threatening letters. And then they expand it out into family members. Um, so the banks are out of control. Their internal systems are shocking. The financial regulators should simplify the system, but they should also tell the banks to sort out their customer service and their complaints procedures. It wouldn't be acceptable in any other industry, and it shouldn't be acceptable in the banking industry. Nikki, you come in on this. Where do you stand on this? Well, I'm sorry to hear about Jack's uh, experience. Um, and yes, there's a whole regime of politically exposed persons and whether they have the right people in that regime. Um, and uh, as Jack says, it was designed to catch, you know, sort of um, say obviously dodgy, but dodgy people. I, I doubt I don't think most of our politicians uh, would uh, would fall in, certainly not uh, family members. And look, I, I found it extraordinary. I think the, the first lesson, I mean, Dame Alison Rose has obviously apologised. Um, I'm sure that she will be wanting there to be an immediate uh, inquiry internally into, uh, you know, who wrote the memo, how on earth this could happen. I think it's a lesson for everybody within these organisations that data subject access requests, which is how Nigel Farage got that information, means that, uh, you know, you can't just write uh, what you want. There's a broader point, though, about obviously um, it's, it's a very it's unpalatable for for people's views to be determinant of whether or not they they can have an account or somebody wants them to continue. But there are a couple of instances where actually um, when somebody is suspected of a financial crime, uh, then uh, actually institutions will need to um, take action and maybe asked by the police to to take action. 
And also if people are extremely abusive towards those who work in the banks, then I think there's no excuse. Um, and sometimes they will get to a stage of saying, well, actually, thank you, but we don't want you to be a customer anymore. Um, so well, look, let's see what the Treasury come up about this. I take Jack's point about the financial regulators um, too. Um, so it's been bubbling along this issue of, of the whole politically exposed persons has been bubbling along for quite a few years now and it does need sorting out. Thank you both ever so much for your time this morning. Really grateful to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Heard there from Thanks. Baroness Morgan, Nikki Morgan, former Education Secretary and also with us Lord McConnell, Jack McConnell, former First Minister of Scotland and former leader of the Labour Party <laughs> in Scotland. 